Do you believe that fall is already starting to wind down? Thanksgiving is less than two weeks away, but we've got something to be thankful for with this video. Today, we're taking a practical approach as we explore the top 10 comics for the fall of 2023 on a budget of just $20. Now, here's the exciting part. Each of these picks not only fits your wallet, but also holds its own in the world of comic book collecting. From budget-friendly first appearances to the debut of a publisher's classic logo, there's something for every taste. So if you're keen on adding to your collection without breaking the bank, stick around, hit that subscribe button, and let's dive into the fall's budget-friendly collectible comic book gems. Kicking off the list is Green Lantern number 48. This January 1994 issue includes a couple of notable cameo appearances. Our first cameo is that of Kyle Rayner, who would make his first full appearance in Green Lantern number 50 when he assumes the mantle of Green Lantern. Also making a cameo appearance in this issue is Alexandra DeWitt. Hopefully readers didn't grow too attached to her though, because she'd made a pretty unfortunate demise just a few issues later in Green Lantern 54. If you've ever heard the term fridging, in the context of comic books, well, poor Alex winds up in pieces and stuffed inside of a refrigerator, which is where the term originated. The issue was written by Ron Mars with the interior art being drawn by Bill Willingham, while Daryl Banks completed the cover art. Green Lantern 48 is actually the most valuable issue in this entire volume of Green Lantern if you're just looking at raw high grade copies, which is kind of surprising because it can be readily picked up for only 20 bucks and oftentimes even a little less. There's been a lot of Doom talk going on lately, so why not throw in a budget-friendly Dr. Doom book on the list? Our number nine book is Books of Doom number four. Books of Doom was a six issue miniseries that Marvel published back in 2006 that explored the origins of Dr. Doom. Luckily for us, Ed Brubraker caught this story assignment along with Pablo Ramondi on the interior art and Paolo Rivera for the covers. The different books of the series focused on different aspects of Doom's early days. Book four specifically focuses on Doom and the origins of his now famous armor. This miniseries is on the harder side to track down, at least in my experience. I've only seen this maybe a couple of times, in all honesty. Most single issues can be picked up for just $10 to $15 each, or you can even find the entire set for between $50 and $75 if you want to pick up the whole series in just a single lot. Some of the most fun comics you can find are comics that originate from television or video game properties. This $20 budget video includes a selection from both. First up is our number eight book, Duke Nukem Forever Zero. 20 years after the Duke Nukem video game franchise launched, IDW produced a promo mini comic book that was included in the special edition of the video game Duke Nukem Forever. Duke Nukem Forever Zero is the character's first comic book appearance, believe it or not. The mini comics May 2011 release date predates the IDW Duke Nukem miniseries titled Glorious Bastard that would follow beginning in July 2011. Artist Zermanico provided both the cover and interior art for the issue, while Tom Waltz and Greg Goldstein handled the story. Recent sales range for between $15 and $20 for a copy of this one, but it's worth way more than that in 1990s shoot 'em up video game nostalgia. You get cast as the big bad of a whole saga's worth of movies. You accomplish your life's work, only to have a bunch of ungrateful superheroes undo it, and then once it's all over, nobody cares anymore. Your key issues lose value, and then suddenly they're starting to show up on the $20 budget videos that Como puts out. Such is the case for our number seven book, Silver Surfer, number 34. And who are we talking about? That's right, our guy Thanos. Published in February 1990, this Jim Starlin and Ron Lim collaboration features the return of Thanos, as Starlin would begin building towards what would become the Infinity Gauntlet saga. Ten issues later, the Gauntlet would debut, and the Infinity Gauntlet miniseries would start the following summer, but it all starts here with the resurrection of Thanos. It's hard to believe that this book was between $50 and $75 just a few years ago at the height of the Infinity Saga in the MCU, but now there are multiple sales of high-grade copies for between $10 and $20. Bucks. 
Who says that procrastinating is always a bad thing, right? Next up, we have the origin issue of one of DC's standout heroes from the Bronze Age in showcase number 97. This issue is all about Power Girl. We not only get her origin story, but this is also the first solo issue devoted to the character. Power Girl's first appearance was in All-Star Comics number 58 back in February of 1976. Two years later, in February 1978's Showcase 97, DC finally provides some backstory for her, and the story would continue on into the following issue. Now, despite the character's popularity, it would take another 10 years before the Power Girl would get her own self-titled series with the publication of Power Girl No. 1 in June 1988. Showcase 97's creative team consisted of Joe Statton and Paul Levitt, with the inks falling to former EC Comics sci-fi great Joe Orlando. Recent sales are once again all over the place. You may be sensing a trend here, but there are multiple sales of near mint range copies for right at our $20 budget. If you've collected 90s comics for any time at all, you've likely accumulated a variety of cover types. You've got your die cut, acetate, covers with holograms on them, chromium covers, and so on. But I'm pretty certain you've got at least one book with a cover like our number five book, Spectacular Spider-Man 200. This shiny guy is sporting a classic 90s foil cover. Published in May 1993, Spectacular 200 was not just an anniversary issue, but an anniversary issue that packed a punch. The J.M. DeMatteis story was titled Best of Enemies, and it concludes with the death of the second Green Goblin and best friend of our hero Peter Parker, Harry Osborn. Harry took over the identity of the Green Goblin in Amazing Spider-Man number 136 after his father Norman Osborn was killed in an unfortunate lawn dart accident in Amazing Spider-Man 122. Well, it was actually his bat glider that impaled him, but it really is just kind of an oversized lawn dart with an engine strapped to it, right? The cover and interior art were provided by Sal Bushima. He's a legendary Spidey artist who really doesn't get enough love in this hobby when we talk about the big names in Spider-Man's creative past. His run in Spectacular Spider-Man is as good as any other artist's run across the entire history of Spider-Man. If you're not familiar with it, check it out. It's worth your time. This book is readily available in high grade for between $10 and $15, which isn't too bad for a book with a major story element inside and a good looking shiny foil cover on the outside. I don't like to talk about the same books over and over, but on occasion, it's necessary to double back and shine the light on a book that I think is worth a second look or maybe even a third, you know, uh, we've been doing this for a little while at this point. Our number four book, Star Slayer number two, is one of these books. Star Slayer was a short-lived six-issue miniseries published by Pacific Comics in the early 1980s, but even though it was so short-lived, it packed a lot of significance into those six issues. Most notably amongst those are the first appearances of Grimjack in issue six, and the first appearance of the Rocketeer here in issue two. The short six page story was written and drawn by creator Dave Stevens. Star Slayer 2 was published in April 1982, and in just nine years time, the character would go from the indie comic book scene with just six pages of story to being a Disney feature on the silver screen. The Rocketeer isn't the biggest comic book character in the world. But there's a fair amount of name recognition that goes along with him due to that Joe Johnston film. For me, the movie is a great throwback to my younger days, and the fact that Star Slayer 2 is attainable on a $20 budget is still crazy to me. Like most books, prices are all over the place right now, but while some deals are out there, VF range copies appear to be regularly selling for right between $15 and $20 at the moment. Let's take a ride in the Wayback Machine all the way back to 1993 once again for our number three book, Biker Mice from Mars number one. This Marvel Comics publication was produced in conjunction with the release of the cartoon series of the same name. In November 1993, when this issue was published, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were still on top of the world, where they'd spent the last couple of years, and as it happens anytime something breaks through and cements itself in the zeitgeist, it's just a matter of time before other creators hop on the bandwagon. And since it was the early 90s, you know it was weird because if a bunch of turtles can become ninjas, then why can't giant humanoid mice ride motorcycles? Handling the creative duties for this issue were writers Bob Ford and Rick Unger, and 
artist Rurik Tyler. The series was short-lived, lasting for only three issues, but the biker mice will ride on forever in our hearts. Following an early 2023 announcement of new ownership and an interest in reviving the brand, the value of Biker Mice from Mars number one shot up to the top of our $20 budget. The recent sales indicate that the FMV for this one is currently in the neighborhood of 10 to 20 bucks. Are you a DC Comics fan? It's okay. I mean, there's no need to be embarrassed. It's okay to like DC. Well, if you are a big DC fan and you have been for a while, you may have heard the term bullethead used to describe people like yourself in the past. While it's not as commonly used today, the origins of the term lie in our number two book, Batman 284. The bullethead moniker arose in the late 70s and early 80s following DC's adoption of the now widely recognizable bullet style logo, which debuted on the February 1977 issue of Batman number 284. DC would utilize this logo for nearly 30 years until the swoosh logo appeared in 2005. The issue itself isn't significant beyond the new label. Batman battles the evil Dr. Zin Zin, a villain so villainous I've literally never heard of him before. The Jim Apero cover's okay, but it's nothing to write home about either, outside of the logo, honestly. So while this issue won't go down as a classic Batman tale, it's another one of those issues that's worth having in your collection due to the historical significance it holds within the hobby. And with recent sales trending well below our peak budget of 20 bucks, it's a pretty easy lift financially as well. With all of the hubbub about the X-Men lately, what better way to cap off our list of the top 10 comics for a $20 budget in the fall of 2023 than with the first appearance of one of the more interesting modern X-Men characters. Our number one book is New X-Men number 128. This is a book I've talked about before as well, but it's been well over two years at this point, and I'm happy to report this issue is as affordable as it has been in quite some time right now. One of the victims of falling comic book prices, it's dropping back down to the $20 value range in recent months. This first appearance of X-Men Phantom X is an issue any X-Men fan should want to have. Phantom X is another product of the Weapon X program that gave us weaponized mutants such as Wolverine, Deadpool, Chamber, Sabretooth, X-23, and Copycat. Unfortunately for New X-Men 128, Phantom X does not make his first cover appearance in this issue. That comes with the following issue, New X-Men 129, and honestly, it's a much better cover than what we have here with his first appearance at least in my opinion. This August 2002 issue was written by Grant Morrison with interior art from Igor Cordage and a Ethan Shriver cover. I hope you're enjoying the back-to-back -back top 10 lists. The plan is to keep them rolling for the next few weeks to finish up fall with a big quarterly video and then to dive right into the winter selections with a new edition of the top 10 comics on a $100 budget. Also on the calendar is a festive top 10 list, and you never know, I might just throw in a new collector series or key for every budget list before we bid farewell to 2023. Here's another reminder that I will be in St. Louis on November 26th for the Spectre Club comic show in Shrewsbury. So if you're in the area, come out and see us at the show after you've had all of that quality family time that you can handle. Collect responsibly, I'll see you in the next video.